In our explosions lab, we had two cars which started from rest, launched with a compressed spring, fly apart at different velocities. Uh, when their masses were identical, it seemed like they flew off at the same velocity, and when one had more mass compared to the other object, it seemed to go slower. So our investigation, we looked at the relationship between the ratio of the two velocities after the explosion as compared to the ratio of their masses. The independent variable, we changed the ratio of the masses by either adding more or less mass to one of the cars, and then we found out what the resulting ratio of the velocities were. We graphed the ratio of the mass on the x-axis and the ratio of the velocities of red to blue on the y-axis, and basically found out graphically how those things are related. Here's an example of one of the whiteboards. When this group graphed the mass ratio, the ratio of the red mass to the blue mass versus the velocity ratio, the red velocity to the blue velocity, they found out as the mass ratio increased, the velocity ratio decreased, which means when the red car's mass as compared to the blue car's mass increased, they found that the red car's velocity versus the blue car's velocity decreased. This original graph looked like a hyperbolic relationship, and they linearized it or re-expressed this to get a straight line so they could write an equation in the form of a slope-intercept form of y equals m times x plus b. They inverted the x variable. Well, the x variable was the, the mass ratio, so the inverse of the mass ratio versus the velocity ratio gave them a straight line, and their equation was the velocity ratio was equal to 0.9869 times the inverse of the mass ratio. Looking at another group's data, they found something very similar. When they graphed the ratio of the masses versus the ratio of the velocities, they also found an inverse type relationship as the mass ratio increased, the velocity ratio decreased, also a hyperbolic relationship. They also linearized it by taking the inverse of the x variable. In their equation, they did something a little bit different. The inverse of the mass ratio is just, instead of the mass ratio being the red mass of the blue mass, the inverse of that would be the blue mass divided by the red mass. So their equation became the red velocity divided by the blue velocity it was equal to 1.059 times the blue's mass divided by the red's mass. See that the slope was a little bit bigger than 1 in the last groups. It was a little bit smaller than 1. When we looked at everybody's data, everybody had a slope of around 1, a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Let's try to generalize these results. If we take the last group's equation, we've got the velocity ratio of red to blue is equal to 1.059 times the inverse of the mass ratio plus 0. Though there was no y-intercept or the y-intercept was considered insignificant turns out to be, or we can generalize it to approximately 1, and the slope didn't have any units, it was unitless. And if we re-express the x variable, being the inverse of the mass ratio that we initially measured, turns out to be the blue mass divided by the red mass, we can now say that our general equation is the velocity ratio of red to blue is equal to the mass ratio of blue to red. So if the blue mass is double the red mass, the red velocity will be double the blue's velocity. Or if you, if the red mass is three times greater than the blue's mass, we'd expect that the blue's velocity would be three times greater than the red's velocity. So we can use this to basically generalize the results of pretty much any event where there are two objects pushing off of one another in opposite directions. Based on their masses, we can tell what their relative velocities would be. This works for two cars exploding, or this works for a bullet being launched out of a gun, or an astronaut uh, pushing a, an oxygen tank away in space. The ratio of the masses will tell us how the velocities will be related. I'm going to take this one step further. If we cross multiply this equation, where we take the red mass times the red velocity, that will be equal to the blue mass times the blue velocity. We see that, and now remember this is a general result, so for any mass ratio that was picked uh, and the resulting velocities, we see that the product of the red car's mass and its velocity was always equal in each instant to the product of the blue car's mass 
and its resulting velocity. Now, a mass times a velocity, or the product of mass times velocity for an object, is actually pretty special in physics. We're going to investigate more about, about why and how that helps us solve these type of problems and collision problems. But the product of a mass times a velocity in physics is known as momentum. And this is going to be a new term which you guys will need to define in your formal lab report. In physics, we use a lowercase p to represent momentum, and it's calculated by taking an object's mass times its velocity. Remember that these arrows over a variable indicate that the variable is a vector quantity. It's something that has both size and direction. Velocity has can be positive or negative, and it can have a size uh, in terms of its speed. So momentum can also has a, have a size and a direction. If your velocity is negative, your momentum is negative. If your velocity is positive, your momentum is positive in sign. So we can't say that the red car had the same momentum as the blue car in the end. They might have had the same magnitude of momentum because the product of the mass and the velocity were the same value, but one car had a negative velocity, the other car had a positive velocity, so we could say that the positive amount of momentum that one car had would be equal to the negative amount of momentum that the other car had in this explosion event. The last thing is just to look at the units. The units for momentum, it's nothing fancy. If you have a mass times a velocity, the units would be the combination of kilogram times a meter per second. In physics, we don't use another unit to represent all of that combination. The momentum units just turn out to be kilogram meters per second. I lastly want to go back and just uh, explain a little bit more in depth why when we have this equation there is no y-intercept when we take y equals m times x plus b that b value is basically insignificant or zero. Now remember if that value is less than five percent of your biggest y value or in this case your biggest velocity ratio you can just get rid of it. No other explanation is necessary as long as you include the values to show that it's less than five percent of your biggest y value. Otherwise you have to reason physically based on the experiment that it's insignificant, that as the x variable approaches zero, the y variable would also approach zero. Now the x variable in our linearized graph is the inverse of the mass ratio. It's actually a little bit easier to think about it if we do the simplified form of that as the blue's mass divided by the red's mass. So the question becomes, as our x variable here, the blue mass divided by the red mass approaches zero, what do we expect the velocity ratio of the red car to the blue car to approach also. So how could we get this ratio to approach zero? Well we could either have a really small blue mass or we could have a really big red mass. Let's imagine there is some blue mass and the red mass is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We have a huge red mass. If the red's mass to blue is much much bigger this ratio is really close to zero. Well, if that's the case, if the red's mass is significantly larger than the blue's mass, we would expect that the red's velocity would be significantly smaller than the blue's velocity. So a really small ratio of masses where m red is really big would lead to a velocity ratio that's really small because the red's velocity would be really small as compared to the blue velocity. So that shows that as the x variable, as this mass ratio approaches zero, we would expect that the velocity ratio would also approach zero.